Hi guys. So I'm reviewing Heartstopper, um, season one, episode three, Kiss. So Nick has done the Google search. He is scanning for gay tests, looking at gay history and gay culture online. And a test, you know, are you gay test, says that he is 62% gay. You know, never take those at face value. Anyway, with tears, he closes the laptop. This guy invites Nick to his birthday party. We later find out that he's called Harry. And Nick, in turn, invites Imogen, who seems to have a crush herself. I like the way that they use Alice's illustrations um, so that you know how somebody fit when somebody gets another, another crush. You can see kind of her hearts and her flowers and everything. Um, that's really cute. So the rugby boys in the changing room are making up this imaginary love triangle with Nick, Tara and Imogen. But Nick shuts that down in a panic because he and Charlie are sitting, are changing next to each other. Nick also invites Charlie to this, uh, to this Harry's party. I think Nick invites him for the wrong reasons. I feel like he invites Charlie because he wants Charlie to be his emotional support gay. Like like Ben did, basically. Charlie is quite reluctant to go to the party because he doesn't really know anybody and knows that Harry doesn't like him. But Nick practically begs for him to come. So he does. Okay. So Charlie then texts his friends that he's going to miss movie night and trust Tao, um, to, trust Tao to be difficult because it's movie night. And it's like, let Charlie have some fun for God's sake. He's like, oh, you know, Nick's ruining this. You know, we, we always do movie night. It's a tradition. Well, then let him skip movie night for one night. It's not going to kill anybody. You know, Tao is really over he's really overprotective and sometimes that's positive and sometimes that's a negative thing i really liked charlie's dad charlie's dad is really protective and it's very cute i was about to say why is isaac but he texts the guys to say that he's sick so he also um can't do movie night so harry's on a mission they go to this party and harry's on a mission to get nick and tara together and obviously people are completely in the dark that tara's happily a lesbian so tao is pouty and possessive and he says at this movie night which is just now him and l he's complaining to l saying that nick stolen charlie away and it's like tao is Charlie allowed to have more? Charlie is should be allowed to have more than one friendship group. He should be allowed to have a boyfriend without being judged for it. I think Tao is way too judgmental. Way too highly strung straight man. Way too judgmental. Um. So Tara and Nick's chat is so lovely. Um. Tara comes out to Nick. Tells tells him that she's she's actually a lesbian and her and Darcy are a thing and Nick's really happy for her and you can tell that Nick can see himself in Tara he wants the strength to come out he wants the strength to be able to be who he is but he just can't do it yet it's Harry's party but Harry is being a dick he's turning 16 he's running his mouth his his friends are hyping him up and he thinks he's the shit because it's his birthday and I don't know whether this is his house or his parents have hired a place but it's a really massive fancy mansion uh, type of place so um you know Harry starts being a dick to Nick, starts taking the piss out of Charlie. And of course, Nick doesn't doesn't accept that. He stands up for himself. He stands up for Charlie, tells him that, you know, tells Harry that he's been homo homophobic and that he doesn't like him and walks off, leaving Harry and his friends stunned because this is Harry's birthday party. And Nick has just told the birthday boy, I don't even really like you. So I don't even know why I'm here. Um, Charlie um, is walking around. I think Charlie's trying to go home. And then he bumps into Ben. Ben automatically tries to get close to Charlie to talk to him. But Charlie also stands up for himself and pushes him away. 
uh, while Nick is um, at the party trying to look for Charlie, um, Imogen tries to charm Nick by dancing with him, but obviously he's not that interested. Nick finally catches up with Charlie and they race upstairs up in this Harry's massive mansion in these all these rooms um, to get some privacy. Uh, they go to this huge room that's mainly white and just empty with windows and Char they sit down and Charlie questions him about Tara and crushes. This scene is very intense as Charlie asks more questions about Nick and his sexuality and who he likes. They get closer and have a meek little kiss. Nick then officially holds Charlie's hand and they kiss some more um, with a little more vigour this time. I jump out of my skin as Harry calls for Nick around the house. Nick walks away from Charlie and finds Harry with most of his mates. They appear to patch things up, which I don't think is realistic because in real life, Harry would have just told to Nick to piss off and probably would have kicked him out of the house. But anyway, when Nick goes back to the original white room where Charlie was, Charlie's gone. It seems that he's called his dad and his dad is picking him up and he clearly didn't have a good time and I felt so sorry even though he got the kiss with Nick I felt so sorry for him when he cried in his dad's arms the next morning Charlie is brushing his teeth having negative thoughts negative flashbacks about his meet up with Nick and confusing himself because really what if Nick never talks to him again what if Nick is freaking out about the kiss and doesn't want to talk to him again what if he cuts him off what if he becomes another bully so there's all this stuff going through at charlie's head because he doesn't know how nick feels when there's a knock at the door charlie's mum tells him to get it and lo and behold it's nick standing there in a blue hoodie in a blue hoodie all flustered looking at charlie longingly in the pouring rain so guys this is a quick one this episode went really quickly so just some notes that i made a Tao seems way too obsessed with keeping his friends always handcuffed to him side to his side and single why can't your friends have girls and boyfriends Tao? why do they have to be alone for the rest of their lives i mean you just selfishly want to keep them alone i think L opening opening up to Tao about making friends at school was lovely Tao's mum is adorable i absolutely loved her i loved how fussy she was over l and i love adults that are supportive of trans kids that was really sweet and really refreshing because like i said i don't see this kind of stuff because i don't watch coming of age stuff so that was nice to see a mum that was so supportive of a trans kid that's not hers that is just a friend of her son's it was really sweet uh cormac hide corin as harry i feel like his god and I'm, I'm gonna sound like a dick but i've got to be honest i feel like cormac's performance is the weakest that i've seen so far of the cast he's a little wooden when it comes to the way that he says his lines and it's not that convincing to me but hey cormac is like 16 you know he's only a baby he's very young and you know he's you know these hot stop is a huge achievement so congrats to him um the kiss scene was great um both nick and charlie both looked like they were gonna have a heart attack but it was it was a very sweet scene um charlie's dad is lovely he's stern but protective and that part where charlie breaks down and they hug that was one of the best scenes in the episode i love that charlie could break down and cry with his dad and his dad isn't one of those hyper masculine dudes that's gonna give charlie a hard time or tell him to be a man or take the piss out with him for showing his emotions it was such a beautiful scene and that yeah that was one of my favorite scenes and i love how supportive um his pet i love how supportive if the parents are in the show okay guys that's the end of the review if you're still here thank you for watching thanks for listening see you in the next one